Hello and welcome back to Kibi School. Harness OpenAI's automatic speech recognition system with a custom, easy to use cross platform GUI. Now, what's the motivation? Number one, I want AI written transcripts for kibbyschool.com. Number two, I want to check out Whisper AI. Number three, I want to show that Kibi is easy to build with. So, if you would like to check it out, make sure Git is installed. You do Git clone this repo right here. And then you have two options. You can do poetry update if you use Python poetry, or you can do pip install dash r path to requirements.txt. This is because poetry allows you to create a requirements.txt for any pip users out there. Then you should enter your virtual environment, and then you type python main.py, and then check it out. You can also check out the py installer executable that I've made and released on the GitHub repo. It's right here and I, I'm showing you how to get to it. So this is the final product quote unquote review. What it is is a basic Kiwi GUI with OpenAI's Whisper integration. It's packaged to a one file exe with Py installer. It has a file chooser so you can pick what file to transcribe. It also has basic error checks and a pop-up when an error occurs. And it's a good project for any first time Kiwi or Python user. So this is the Kiwi Whisper app that I've made, and it's run through the exe that is created in the distribution folder in my project. And one thing to note is that this is within my virtual environment, so I'm not going to be able to run the Whisper portion on my virtual machine because it's not powerful enough to run Whisper. But I can still show you that the GUI works. And then a couple things. It's packaged to one file exe with py installer. I've shown you that right here. It has a file chooser so you can pick what file to transcribe. That You see the file chooser right here. You can also choose different drives. It also has basic error check. So for example, if you want to transcribe and you have nothing to show, it says something went wrong. Please check the file type and destination. Press any key to close. Okay. And then it's a good project for any first time Kiwi or Python user. And then it's also only 105 lines of code. So if you go to main.py, which is the, the main thing I'm running, it's only 105 lines. It's good because Python and Kiwi allow you to abstract away underlying concepts to quickly prototype an app. It would be even less if I did not count comments. As you can see, there's already one comment here. There's uh, some comments here, but 105, it's pretty, pretty small for what it does. There's also huge room for improvement to make it pretty. Another point of improvement is multiprocessing to handle Whisper. Now the big deal with that is that Whisper is running some blocking code and you need to move the blocking code of Whisper and offload it to some multiprocessing um, subprocess. So that's one more improvement that I would make if I had a little bit more time to continue with this project. So this version, uh, I've shown this already, like manually, this is just an image. This version is also built from scratch with Py installer from the git cloned repo on a, win on a Windows virtual machine. So it is tested on a blank install. Another thing is I didn't test Whisper though as my virtual machine cannot run Whisper unlike the host. So let's begin. What's the plan? The plan is we make a new virtual environment with poetry. We install Whisper with poetry, apply Whisper to a test video, and then make the Kiwi GUI. When we're going to make the Kiwi GUI, there's a couple features we want. The one feature is you select a file, and for that, we can use a file chooser. We output a text file in the same current working directory, and then we make the text file markdown compliant for the website, which now that I've done with finished this project, you don't actually need to do anything to make it markdown compliant. If anything, markdown can actually just display the text. You just have to manually edit the output because, for example, Kiwi is being heard as kiwi some other words are not being heard correctly so that's a small thing and it still requires some manual but it saves a lot of time because with whisper ai it does the first pass for you and then you just read it and then you can do the second pass manually and then after that paste onto a markdown file and then have it uploaded to the website and that's pretty easy and really fast and it saves a lot of time after you know making the kiwi gui so let's continue Let's make a new virtual environment with poetry and install Whisper with poetry. So there's one problem when I did this, which poetry add open AI Whisper does not work. It does not work off the bat. And what I've noticed with these AI machine learning TensorFlow libraries is that it just don't work well with poetry. 
And then here, there's a comment that, that says they don't use PEP 508 markers. So what they are good with is these AI machine learning and TensorFlow libraries. They're always tested with PIP, but they're not tested with poetry. And I will show you the comment here. Just cannot open install OpenAI Whisper. And it says right here, poetry assumes that all distributions of a package have the same requirements. If you want to use OpenAI Whisper with poetry, you should ask them to express platform specific variations in their dependencies by using PEP 508 markers. Closed. So that's just one thing I noticed, but that does not mean you should not use poetry with machine learning with TensorFlow. You just need to Google for the fixes. And the fix was in this GitHub page. Let me just show it right here. It says, okay, poetry can still install. Where are you? Poetry can still install Whisper. All you have to do is set the Git repo and then set the revision. And in the pipe project Tomel, and I'll even show you my own pipe project Tomel. It's right here. And it works. So next step, let's continue. So now that we have Whisper installed, let's apply Whisper to a test video. Like what's the point of making a Kiwi GOI and making it work if Whisper itself doesn't work. So we always test the things that fail first. And the thing that would fail first is if Whisper just didn't run at all, right? So let's run apply Whisper to a test video. Here's our example code, whisper test.py. We import Whisper. We set the model as this model, which is base. The result is transcribe this video, one of the old clock videos, and then print the result, right? So what did I get? A module that was compiled using NumP1 cannot be run with NumP2 as it may crash. So I got a strange error, right? It's using an old version of NumP. Okay, it's asking for NumP 1.x, so like less than two, right? So what we can do is just manually add NumP to PyProjectTomL and just specify less than two. So again, I will show you my PyProjectTomL. I just said less than two because it told me it would crash with NumP greater than two. So I'll just use a version less than uh, two, right? So we did that. And then it run main.py again. But it, it works now, but there's a new error. And what's the new error? It says something about FP16. I have no idea what it is. I just Googled the error, and then let's see what the solution is. The solution is, using the second example in the readme, you can just set FP16 to false. OK, and then um, for my notes, see line 76 of main.py. So we can go here, control, Z, control G, 76, right here. You can just set it to false, you won't get the error message. It still ran, as you can see here. It still ran, it just says it's not supported. So I don't know, I just don't want to see this error message because the message is there for a reason. I don't know what the reason is, but I know I don't want to see it. So I, I have that little fix. And now it works. Now the whisper test works. And you can see right here, welcome back to Kibi school. I'm going to be teaching you about Kibi cloud, right? It's not Kibi clock. So, still really good for just a first pass, but definitely you still need to do some human touch in order to get this good enough to put on the website. But it saved me like two hours reading the video and then transcribing it manually. I think that in itself saved a lot of time for me and it's really good because of that. And it's worth it. So here's more working example code. We import whisper model whisper load model base the only change is fp16 is equal to false okay so now we know that whisper works we know how to run it the next step is to make a kiwi gui so in my mind this is what uh, the basic app should look like this is going to be the source file this will be the destination file and there's a button here that just says transcribe and in the middle here there's going to be some file chooser right so let's do it and then this is just a plan of attack right so the idea is there's gonna be a root box layout right here. And in this box layout, it will be this second box layout right here and this file chooser. So this box layout is gonna be vertical, right? There's two widgets, this box layout and this file chooser. And within box layout two, it will be a horizontal box layout like this. And it will contain three widgets, source button, destination button, and transcribe button. So that's the plan of attack. Let's see it work in action. So this version is saved as midpoint1.py. Now let's look at midpoint1.py and check out the KV. So we can go here, we can look at midpoint1.py. As you can see, there are two box layouts, right? 
the root widget is just a box layout, right? With a vertical, and then let's reference the image right here. So as you can see, this first box layout is orientation vertical. It's going to be the yellow box layout. And then there's two sub widgets, which is a box layout and a button, right? And within this box layout, it's gonna have three buttons. And then the fourth button, which is, it's a placeholder for the file chooser. It just says HW4, hello world four, right? So let's enter our virtual environment. So CD could be whisper and then Python midpoint dot, I think it's one dot I. Let's check it out, right? So this is going to be my base of what the app is going to look like. And it's similar to the one that I have pre-envisioned beforehand, right? And again, it says this version is saved as midpoint one dot pi, right? So with the plan completion, what have we done? We've made a new virtual environment with poetry. We've installed Whisper with poetry and we fixed some bugs. We've also applied Whisper to a test video with the basic Whisper code. And now we're on the step of making a Kiwi GUI, selecting a file, and then outputting the text file in the same current working directory. So that's it for part one. Part two is we're going to finish the Kiwi GUI. Thank you for watching. This has been Kiwi School. Have a great day.